In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create an editable grid view uh, for Airtable using mini extensions. So this is an example. What you see here is an example of, of how this could look. Um, you're probably familiar already with um, Airtable's offerings in, in this kind of uh, scenario where you, know, you can share a view, um, but in order to edit those uh, records, your users are going to need access to your base. You know, you can share an interface and stuff like that, but you need those users um, to have access to your base, to have added, added access to your base. And obviously, um, you, you have to pay for that. So with many extensions, um, you can give your users access to your Airtable data without them having to have an account on Airtable at all. In fact, they don't even have to have a mini extensions account. Um, this page here, um, for example, I can just send the link to anybody and anybody with that link can simply access this site without any kind of login. Um, we do have a very similar um, system that does require a login, um, which is called our portal extension and for that the the login data is managed inside of Airtable itself where you basically have a table with the user data but this editable grid view is is a, is a simpler version of that that does not require any kind of login so everybody that uses this has sees the same data basically whereas for the portal everybody would see data that is linked specifically to them so you can see there's a it has quite a lot of functionality. We can have different views. So this is kind of like a ticket system example. We can have different views um, with different pre-applied pre uh, filtering conditions or sorting, for example, like say this is showing all the tickets. And then if I just want to see the unassigned ones, I just click on that and that automatically filters that out. Um, but we also have um, the option to show these kind of drop-down filters for, for select fields. So say if I only want to see the urgent ones, I just select that and then it filters my current view by that. Um, we also have a search function and there's a, there's a lot more um, to do here. And you can even create um, a new record that goes straight into Airtable right from this uh, editable grid view. Um, and the fields you see um, are basically determined by you. So you can you can choose which fields are, are available, um, which fields need to be filled out, which ones are required, etc. And as soon as you hit submit, that record gets created inside of Airtable. And also you can ask your users to edit um, existing records. Um, so there's a there's an open button by default. It just says open. Um, next to each record. And you can open that up in inside a child form is what we call this. Um, and here you can, you can also decide which fields are available, which fields are editable. So for example, like I can type in the resolution field, um, but I would not be able to change the username. So you have full control over that um, and, and can decide which um, which data is editable and which which isn't. And you can also obviously turn off, um, yeah, I'm just gonna close this. And obviously you can also uh, turn off creation of new records, for example, if you don't want that. So there's a lot of control over this. And you can also add multiple tables to, to one um, grid view or one shared view. Um, so if you have multiple tables, you can you can you can have them all here, and they just appear here as as different items basically, where you can switch between the tables. Okay, so let me show you now that you kind of have an idea of, of kind of what this looks like. Let me show you how you can set this up, and it's actually really really easy. So this is the underlying data in Airtable. Um, you don't actually have to do anything here, honestly. Um, basically, whatever you have set up here, you just have to remember which table and which base you're in, um, because we're going to need to um, select that. So if we go to mini extensions, actually, let's just um, close this. So this is sort of your main dashboard. 
um, on many extensions once you're logged in. I've already selected the extension demos base. And then here you have a list of all the extensions that are in your base and the automations below. So in order to create a new one, you just hit the create button here. And then in this case, we're gonna do a grid view. Um, the grid view, Grid view is just one of the view options we have. We also have list views, gallery views, Kanban, chart, calendar, map view. These are all fundamentally the same, but just a different way of presenting the data. Um, so in this video, we're gonna be focusing on the grid view. And as I mentioned, um, another option would be the portal, which is quite similar, but requires a login. So each user will only see the, the records that are linked to that specific user. But let's create this grid view for now. Um, so you just give it a you just give it a name, um, and then you choose the table or tables that you want to have visible. So in this case, it's the ticket system table. So this list basically shows all the tables in your in your current base. And then you just hit create. Now you've basically You've already created the extension and you could literally just hit open and it'll load it up with full default uh, configuration. You can see it's already pretty close to what I'd set up here. Like if I just remove this and yeah, so this is almost the same already um, straight out the box. And then you can customize from here. Now, when you first create a, any type of share view, so any type of grid, gallery, etc., without a login, you'll, you might notice that in Airtable itself, we will automatically create this mini extensions table. So this table is, is used by, by shared views. Um, so this is kind of a special table. Please leave that alone. Don't delete it. Uh, don't change anything here. This is managed basically by us. You don't have to do anything here um, in the in 99.999% of the cases. Don't touch this. Only unless we like from from the mini extensions team tell you to to do anything. But usually, just leave this alone. You can hide it if you like. You know, you can just click on on the um, on the table and just. Um, select hide, like mine is already hidden, and then, you know, out of sight, out of mind, and just ignore it. Um, I just wanted to mention that because this will show up the first time you create a shared view. Okay, so if we go back to our configuration page, this is what that looks like, right? So if you've selected multiple tables, you'll see them kind of as a list here. Um, and then each table will have a form associated with it. That form is what shows up when you click on open. And by default, the fields that are visible here in the form are the same as the ones that are visible in the grid itself. But you can change that if you like. Um, this is just the, the default to, to sort of get you started basically. Um, but almost everything about this is, is customizable in some way. So um, yeah, there's a lot of options that you can play around with. Let me show you just a couple. So for example, as I've mentioned already, um, if you if you gave this link to anybody, um, you know, somebody without an Airtable account, without a mini extensions account, without any kind of account, um, they would still be able to access this shared view, which you know, maybe a good thing or maybe a bad thing. Um, but if you wanted to put a password, a general password on this extension, you can do that in the security tab. So you can just enable this and it'll auto generate some random password for you. And let me just copy that. And if I reload this page now, it'll ask me for this password before I can access it. So if I now just paste this in and hit next, now, I'm seeing the page. This is not a, a login as such, it's just a security measure basically. Um, so that's one way, one thing um, to keep in mind, which might be a good thing to, to activate uh, depending on, on kind of your security implications. I'm just gonna remove that for now. Okay, um, 
you can also, for example, add menu items. So these will just appear as links in the header of the portal, where maybe you want to link to another page, or you can even embed pages um, inside of the shared view um, that are you know relevant to what people might be doing with it. Um, so here there's, there's quite a, quite a few things you can do with this. You can customize the header a bit. Um, you know, you can set the page title that's actually shown in the browser. So this says, just says shared view here, shared view. If you want to change that, you can change that here. You know, you can, you can add a logo to your header and there's a, there's a bunch of things you can do. And then the really powerful stuff is once you click on either the table or the form. So for example, if I click on the table, here I can change the layout. So as I mentioned, like all of those different views, they're essentially the same, but just with a pre-selected layout. So if you want it, if you know, if you've created a grid view, but then you realize, oh no, actually I want a list, you don't have to create anything new, you can just change it here. Um, and same goes for the other ones, obviously. Um, yeah, and then if you, for example, want to customize which of these uh, buttons are available to your users. You can do that in the user actions section. So, for example, you can you can deactivate the search bar by default. Basically, all these are switched on, um, but you can turn them all off if you want. So, search bar, the sort sort button, um, etc. So, there's a lot of options here. If you want to be able to edit in line straight on the grid, you can turn this on, and then um, so right now, like without reloading this, I wouldn't be able to change anything directly here. I would need to go to open the record up to change anything. But since I've now enabled inline editing, if I refresh the page, now I can just change the status right from the grid. Um, and also like which ones, which of these fields can be changed is also based on the setting of the child form. So, for example, if I wanted to, as I've shown in the, in the initial example, if you want to disable um, editing of a certain field, for example, the user email, username, you would simply open up this child form here and then go to the field that you want to change, click on that, and you just enable read only. And then you could switch between the fields using these arrows, for example, and you can also enable read only here. Or you can just kind of click out of outside of that modal and, and navigate around this way. Um, so here, the child form has a, a ton of options. It's essentially almost um, an entire mini extensions form built inside of this view. So there are a lot of options here um, that I can't possibly uh, discuss all of them in, in this video. Um, but with anything about this, you can always reach out to us through this chat icon here in the bottom right corner, and we can always help you with any questions you might have. So if we go back to the table now, um, so I've already spoken about the user actions um, um, section here. And if you want to have these um, like predetermined filters, like I showed you in an example, these here at the top, these would be configured in the custom views section. So you'll always have one by default. If you only have one, the button for that's not going to show. It's just going to load that view. But as soon as you have a second one, if I reload the page now, we'll see two, two custom views. Yeah, and by default, they're just unnamed. But if you click on one, you can give it a name. And let's just replicate one of the examples that I did before. Uh, let's say um, in progress, and then I can define, I can set this up based on an existing Airtable view. Actually, in this case, I think I already have an Airtable view um, that has has the setup. In fact, it also it'll also by default pull the name from that view, so I don't even have to set that. Um, so we can just just save this here. And let's say, let's, let's configure the other one manually. Let's say this one as unassigned. And then here you can just add a filter. And let's say unassigned to is empty. And then we can also add a sort. 
Um, actually, the default one is kind of perfect in this case. It's just sort, sorting by ID, but you can you can select any of these fields to sort however you like. Okay, and now if we reload this, we'll have um, two custom views. The first one is loaded by default, um, but then as soon as your your users start using this, if they then reload the page, they'll automatically end up on the view that they used the last time. Um, so yeah, so this one here is the in progress one. If I go to unassigned, I'll just see the unassigned one. All right, so I think, um, let's see. Um, yeah, no, let's, uh, let's just look at this real quick. Um, here in the field section, you could define um, different fields. So as I said, by default, it'll use the exact same fields as the child form. But for example, if you wanted less forms on uh, less fields on the grid, but more on the form, you could simply start adding fields here and then only those fields are gonna show up. So if I just do this, only these three fields are gonna show up as soon as I refresh the page. Yeah, well, these three and always the primary field. Um, and then if I open this up, it'll still show all of the other ones as well. Yeah, so by default, they're linked together, but as soon as you start adding fields here, um, they, they sort of become independent from each other. And if you wanted, for example, to change the title of, of the table, so this would be displayed up here, for example, um, you, you could set that here. Uh, you can also set a description, etc. And here in the create and expand records section, that's where you'd um, determine if you allow users to create new records uh, from this view um, or not. Um, expansion of records is always enabled um, by default. Well, it's, it's always enabled. Um, so if you don't want users to, um, to edit any data, you would simply open the, the child form and then you can use this bulk actions thing um, menu here and make every field read only. And that way they can, they can expand the record, but they can't actually change anything. So um, yeah, this is basically how you would disable editing as well. All right, so this is just a really quick overview of, of how um, to set up uh, a grid view and sort of some of the basic functionality. But as I mentioned, if you have any questions about this, if you need any help, uh, we're always here um, to assist you. Um, you can just reach out to us through the through the chat icon in the in the bottom right corner, and yeah, we'd be happy to help you.